What's the biggest trade in sports history? Well, Skip, look, I, we, we all know about the Babe Ruth from Boston to uh, to the Yankees. Yeah, and they, built a, a, they bought him. Yeah. They sold him. Yeah, like, <laughs> that was really a trade. Yeah. But for me, and I, and I went back and forth with this because I played with a guy that was in a blockbuster trade, John Elway, yes, in 83 from the uh, Baltimore Colts yep. um, when they were in Baltimore then to the Broncos. But, Skip, it's got to be the Herschel Walker because the Cowboys were awful. They hadn't made the playoffs since 1982. And, and Herschel was the only player that they had of, of importance. He was, you know, uh, um, arguably the best running back at the time in football. And Jimmy's like, I got the, one of the best backs in football, but we're not going anywhere. And he found a sucker. I mean, it, it's something about Minnesota. Is it something to water those 10,000 lakes that they keep getting suckered in these trade skills because the Timberwolves just got a for Rudy Gobert? And uh, back then, I think Lynn was the general manager. If I'm not mistaken, Mike Lynn. Mike Lynn. Yeah. I think he was the general manager, Skip. He was. Jimmy traded Herschel Walker. They got five players and six draft picks. The draft picks turned out to be Emmitt Smith, Russell Maryland, Kevin Smith, Darren Woodson. Emmitt Smith became the all-time lead rusher and one of the 100 greatest players in NFL history. Darren Woodson was a four-time Pro Bowl. He belongs in your Hall of Fame. He, yes. Yes. And, <clears throat> excuse me, the all-time leading tackle, tackler, Russell Maryland was a Pro Bowler. Mm -hmm. And Herschel basically played two and a half years in Minnesota, had one more thousand-yard season, and then became a journeyman, bounced around Philly, the Get Giants. Back to it Dallas. ended up coming, coming back to Dallas. But this was the trade that put the Cowboys back on the map and put them back as being America's team. Because, Skip, I'm not so sure from that lull of when they, it seemed like it ended in, with the catch. It seemed like it ended there. I, I told you, <laughs> one dynasty was born and one was starting to crumble yes. with that catch. And then once that trade happened, yep. The Cowboys became a dynasty again, yep. and they have a look back. So for me, it, uh, I'm going to go Herschel Walker, although I do believe John Elway is a close second. Okay, I hear you about Herschel. I'll get to that in a moment because I was right in the middle of that. I was in Dallas in those days. But I got to hark back and go old school NBA here with two deals. The, the Kareem deal, where, where the Lakers get... <laughs> who became the all-time leading NBA scorer, whose record is about to be broken by your man, LeBron James. He was, he was the best player in the 70s, and they got him. They, they got him for Junior Bridgman and Dave Myers and Elmore Smith and Brian Winters, and all those guys, are they're all nice players, but, but they ain't no Kareem. No. And, and the, the Lakers got Walt Wesley and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, right. and it's just highway robbery, man, yes. because it's all-time, all-time. Then I'm going to go you one better because of the passing of now the late great Mr. Russell, Bill Russell. Okay. Remember, he was a trade. He, he got drafted by the then St. Louis Hawks, mm -hmm. would become the Atlanta Hawks, yeah. obviously. But how does history change if they hang on? Because they had him. They drafted him second overall. And a guy named Cy Green went to Rochester number one. It was a bad idea. But <laughs> This, this is Bill Russell we're right. talking about, the all-time greatest winner in the history of sports. Right. And all of a sudden, because Ed McCauley was Boston center, and he was, he was pretty good. Right. He was a six-time All-Star, and he made five All-Star teams for the Celtics. So he was pretty good, right. but he was no Bill Russell. Right. But he was from St. Louis and wanted to play in St. Louis. Right. So it was Ed McCauley, and they said, well, you got to throw in Cliff Hagen, who had been doing a military stint. And Red Auerbach's like, I don't know, Cliff Hagen's really good. But he, he, he threw in Cliff Hagen, who then made six all-star teams in St. Louis right. and is in the Hall of right. Fame. Right. So you, you, the, the point is, I don't care who you threw in, it's <laughs> Bill Russell. <laughs> yeah. And Boston got him via trade. Right. Okay? So it's kind of the reverse of you know, Babe Ruth, right? right? It, yes. You, you got Bill Russell for that? Mm -hmm. I, I don't care who it is, Ed McCauley and Cliff Hagen. Okay, so that's, that's pretty great. That's I got to say, yeah. that's way up there. Okay, now back to Herschel. So Mike Lynn calls our friend John Wooten, who's then sort of at the acting GM of the Cowboys, and says, hey, I really want Herschel. Well, what would you give us? And he starts rattling off like he's, he's going to give you everything. Right. He's going to give you their, the sun, the moon, their future. But, but what, what was even crazier, they got five players who were all decent players, right. Jesse Solomon and Ike Holt and Darren Nelson and others. But you can keep any one of them that you want. If you want them, you can have them. Right. And so they got to try out the players or send them back. Right. But they came to play for Dallas. 
Remember, Dallas missed on a, a couple of those picks, but it didn't matter because they got so many draft picks yeah. that they used the first one to go from 21 in the first round up to 17 because Jimmy says Emmett Smith is falling. <laughs> well, Jimmy knew Emmett because he had had to coach against right. him when Emmett was, was at the University of Florida, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And and he's saying he's just. He's just too good. Right. What's it? Well, he ran four six at the, at the combine. Right. Okay. Or w w at his pro. Day. At his pro day. Yeah. Because back then, they juniors. Have, yeah. yeah. The juniors. That was right. really the first year the juniors started coming out. Was my year, nineteen ninety. Okay. Four six forty. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? With a football under his arm, he looked like he's about four. He still he still ran four six with a football. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So they, they steal him, all time leading rusher. And, and again, Russell Maryland was he was a good player. Right. He did make a Pro Bowl. And right. I got you. But th they took him number one overall right. because he agreed to take the, like seventh or eighth money. Right. If you'll take me and give me the distinction of being the number one overall okay. pick. Yeah. Kevin Smith became a, like a starter at corner. Mm -hmm. he, he was very good right. for, for eight years. Okay, that works. And you mentioned Darren Woodson. And they also got Clayton Holmes in the third round, who became like a nickel corner right. for them for three years. He was pretty good. Right. Well, you're, you're just this is all for a Herschel Walker. Who had already been used up yeah. by the Dallas Cowboys. Well, they do. Well, they used him up in the USFL also. And they, because they, they the generals, they ran him into the ground. He well, had like 2,300 yards well, rushing and, one year. And so did Paul Hackett as the coordinator of the Dallas Cowboys right. because the, the first two years, the, the, the touches are extraordinary. Yeah. And then the third year, which is the year before this year yeah. that we're in, in question, he ran at 361 and he caught it 53 times. And in touches, he was only 10 short of the leading in touches. Uh, guess who? Our man Eric Dickerson. Dickerson. So my point was, he was battered. He's on his last legs. He was on his last legs, and and Jimmy's like, yeah. And some of the players that they got skipping, uh, Ike Holt. I remember Ike Holt. He was a, a cornerback out of Alcorn. Yeah. Jesse Solomon, I think, from Florida State. Mm -hmm. Darren Nelson, was. the returner out of Stanford. He was. He was. Uh, but Ike Holt was. He was a very. He was a very good physical corner. Um, I think Jack Del Rio. Did they ship Jack? They shipped Jack they to, did. to Minnesota. In that situation, and that would Jack like they'll never win, they'll never win another game or a playoff game, and they went to the okay. Three Super so, Bowls. so at the press conference, Jimmy called it the great train robbery. It was, <laughs> yeah, bigger okay. a bigger rip off than the Louisiana Purchase. <laughs> the great train robbery, and <laughs> it was a high skill. <laughs> I, I know, but but trust me on this: most of the Dallas media and the the majority of the fans did not love this because Herschel was all they had. Oh, they had, yeah. And I remember the lead to my column was good trade could be great if they could hit on the picks. Right. Well, I, I was willing to go to good because Herschel was godlike in Dallas. Yeah. But the irony was I had many battles with him, but I just had a very public battle on his local cable show on the Friday night before we had gone at it over a bunch of stuff about Herschel questioning some some of his his workouts, yeah. you know, like he was doing a thousand, thousand push-ups yeah. and a thousand sit-ups yeah. a day, and his teammates were telling me, baloney, baloney. yeah, baloney. Well, there's a story about a guy who one of his teammates at the Giants' uh, locker room in the Giants, he was in training camp, and said uh, Herschel was in the bed, and the guy just kept looking at him. And uh, say after like 30 minutes, Herschel asked like, man, why you keep staring at me? He said, I'm waiting to see you do them thousand push-ups. <laughs> wow. hey, I heard him say, you know, you do a thousand push-ups, thousand sit-ups. Nobody can confirm that they okay. actually saw him do that. Well, Herschel can't exaggerate, as we've seen we, we, of late. Okay. Yeah. Woo. Okay. <laughs> okay. But at that point, it was stunning that the Dallas Cowboys would give up their only gate attraction yes. because they were horrible. They were horrible. They were bad. But they did have Troy Aikman, and they had Steve Wallace, but they had Troy Aikman, and they and had Michael they had who Michael was re rehabbing his knee. Right. He'd blown he just, it completely right. out. He just came in 88. So, and all of a sudden... You draft Emmett Smith. And well, when you won, him. once you got Emmett, you had won. And no matter what else happens after that, Darren Wilson became a four-time All-Pro. Yeah, if, if you just traded straight up Herschel <laughs> Walker for Emmett Smith, it you would won. be thank you very much. Yes, because yes. right? Emmett was what, an MVP, a Super Bowl MVP, uh, all-time leading rusher. But, Skip, you parlayed that and you look what they became. In six years after that trade, they had won three Super Bowls. So, and, and obviously, I believe they should have won five in a row. Uh, had, had, there's no question. It would have been very difficult for someone to beat them if they'd have had Jimmy. Yeah. Because Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy kept their feet to the fry. Jimmy trimmed the fat. You were not going to get lazy. You were not going to get fat. You were not going to uh, uh, rejoice on Jimmy's watch. Mm -mm. That no. wasn't going to happen. And you got to skip. Think about it. When, when Emmett... Emmett, came, Emmett's a year younger than I am, but we came out in the same draft. You got to think about it. When they won that last Super Bowl, Emmett was 26. 
Troy was like 27, 27. Mike was like 28. True. They had won three Super Bowls, and all of their key guys are under the age of 30. Agreed. I was in the middle of it. I wrote books about it. It was a stunner, but they definitely would have won in 94. Four. Yeah. And I think they would have won in 96, but thanks to the great train robber. No, thanks to it. I bet Jerry, I bet Jerry had to do it over again. I bet he left Jimmy alone. Like just because Skip, you look, you don't think there's been some time trying times between Coach Belichick and Mr. Kraft? But he wasn't willing to blow it up. It took him 20 years for him to say, you know what, Bill, I'm gonna let you do what you want to do with Tom and move on. But Skip, he got six of them. He got six and nine trips. It's easy to say that now, but Jimmy was pretty hard on Jerry. Are you, I, I think you, I, you don't think probably Co deservedly so. But, you don't but, think Coach Belichick is hard to deal I with? Know, I know. <laughs> I, I got it. But you're right. In the big picture, if Jerry had just swallowed some of his pride, but he wanted he, he, Miss Skip, but Miss, a lot of times the guys don't even. I mean, the owners normally don't want to be the face of the franchise. Well, Jimmy well, Jerry <laughs> always wanted to be the fair face of the franchise, even when he had Troy Emmett Michael Jimmy. He wanted to be the face of it. Well, he was the acting general manager, <laughs> and he did pull off a couple of deals that were instrumental to this. So Charles Haley, yeah, okay. Mr. Kraft said, you know, I'm just gonna keep you know adding these all uh, these eighty trophies to my locker. Yep. Now he got six, about to get with an MJ. He ain't gonna I get a dish with Russ, and Russ, we trust. Uh, yeah, you don't. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show, and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed, or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.